Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here, and this is the Astrological Wings Channel. I'm going to take a look at the Astrological Weather Report for the week of November 27th through December 3rd. So we're on to our last week of November, and I will get to the December report next week. But this week we have a full moon in Gemini, which is right now today, Monday, and we also have Mercury going into Capricorn today, I mean this week, and so I want to talk about those things and a few other things. Um, first, a little business. Um, the Astrological Wings channel is a free video blog that I do on YouTube every week, so if you have a YouTube account and you like what you see, please become a follower, and don't forget to turn your notifications on because then you'll know when I post the blog, which is usually on Sunday or Monday, somewhere in that period. And um, it's also available on all kinds of podcasts. It was a podcast before it was a video podcast, so it's still out there. It's distributed by Buzzsprout. Just look it up on your favorite um, podcast. Just look up Astrological Wings Channel. You should be able to find it. If you don't find it there, you know, just look around because it's definitely out there. It's a great way to be able to access the blog while you're doing other stuff. I usually am just talking to the camera, so you're not really missing much on the video level if you opt to go that way and listen to the blog. I do post the link also on Instagram. So if you have an Instagram account, become a follower of the Astrological Wings channel on Instagram. And that's another place where I also sometimes post additional comments and information on the astrology going on during the day, during certain um, days, during the week. Also, I do post the link on my private Facebook account. So if you want to become a friend, um, friend me at Matthew Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N, Matthew with two T's. And, um, you know, each week um, you'll see that in your newsfeed and you can access it there. And remember, it's a free service. So what I ask in return is that you pass the link on to somebody else, even if you've done it before. You know, you met someone else maybe recently that, you know, might have an interest in astrology over half the world does. So um, please do that. It helps the blog to grow in a very organic way natural type of way. And also, um, I am a professional astrologer. So if you ever need a reading or if you know someone else who does, please email me at mattthue823 at gmail.com. I've been doing readings professionally for over 20 years. I was trained. I have a, um, you know, love to have to do that for you or someone you know when you're ready for it. And I'll give more information on that at the um, end of the blog. But let's, again, no commitment if you want to just start up a conversation about that or any other kind of astrological service. Just email me at mattthue823 at gmail.com. Okay, so right today, um, you know, we have this full moon in Gemini. And that, you know, full moon means that we have an opposition of the moon to the sun. And the sun happens to be in, of course, Sagittarius, the opposite sign of Gemini and um, and this is the information and knowledge axis that this full moon is occurring on and so the Sun is also conjunct Mars if you remember Mars went into Sagittarius and talked about that last week so we had the two of them you know together pulling at the moon in Gemini and they're all locked together in a mutable T-square, although it is separating with Saturn. Saturn in the first degree of Pisces. And, you know, and, and, if, and if you'll remember, that's also freshly direct. It went direct a couple weeks ago or so. So, um, so this is a T-square that perfected right, you know, right before the full moon kicked in and so this full moon is going to be a lot of the after effects of that t-square it's the the t-square is a mutable t-square it's the moon in gemini opposite the sun and mars and sagittarius square saturn in pisces and t-squares are 
our energy of great tension. So that's, you know, already adding to a full moon, which is, of course, every month is one of the most tense times of the month. And why is that? Because the moon, the emotional side of us, is in opposition to the sun or the willful side of us and the you know where we really want to go with our life path and our ego and, and and when it's on this axis like i said this is the informational axis you know this is this axis has a lot to do with collecting information but it has a different way of doing that and that's where the opposition energy comes in the Gemini way of doing that is very intellectual. It's very like air. It's an air sign. It's driven to, you know, go and collect information in different places, kind of a little bit here, a little bit there. And then with Gemini, it's endless processing, not only in our own minds, like chewing things over, bringing in this information, but the need to communicate that with other people to share that information. And many times we're just really doing this for ourselves. You know, we're just trying to take this new information and bounce it off other people to see how they react, like to use them as a mirror to see if it's something, you know, that is good for us through the lens of the other. And Gemini being a dualistic sign is always looking outside itself you know, to see, to try to find what's actually within itself. That's, you know, one of the big things with Gemini energy. If you have a lot of Gemini energy, you should be aware of that. And so, and so that's, you know, that's what that Gemini moon wants to do. And that's, you know, because it's the moon, this is the emotional side of us that is locked into the Gemini energy in this full moon. And, it, and, and so we actually are getting security from doing that, from collecting, there's things we kind of feel like we need to know right now on, and that's coming from an emotional level. And so we're like using the intellect to go out and collect that. And we can get that from people. We can get that from all kinds of input, informational sources. But we have a tendency when the moon is in Gemini to just jump from one thing to another. We don't stay very focused on anything for very long. We're kind of getting a little bit here, a little bit there. I always like to use the analogy with Gemini of a butterfly, you know, just going from flower to flower and, you know, very rarely stays a long time on any individual flower. It gets a little nectar here, a little there. That's what Gemini does with information. It gets a little bit here, a little bit there, brings it back into itself, feeds itself, feeds the intellect, right? That's what makes it feel more secure that, you know, there's this information that it will be helpful to me, will be helpful to resolve some of the emotional stuff I'm going through right now. But this opposition to Sag is like, okay, you know, Sag is like, you know, with the sun attached to it, is like, go out and directly experience. That is how you gain information. It, it goes beyond being information then and becomes knowledge. And what does knowledge ultimately become? The next sign in the Zodiac Capricorn, wisdom, right? So, so that's what Sag is saying. It's like, you know what? You know, I'm really tired of this, like, just constantly picking up little bits here and there and constantly processing. I want to go out and experience directly through different sources, put myself out there into places that I have not been before, expose myself in this very open way, in this very tolerant way of taking in any kind of new information that I can by just going out and hitting it, hitting the road, hitting, you know, exposing myself to other people, other places, different experiences, new things. You know, get, it's, it's more of a secondary knowledge. It's more of like something where I'm building up from what I already primarily know. I'm focusing in on things that are very interesting to me and allowing those things to change my viewpoint, 
to actually, uh, you know, allow that to happen, to not just process that, but to actually let it happen. Let me update my value system. Let it, let me update my knowledge. Let me update, you know, my, the things that I'm interested in, the things that I value. So that's where the opposition is coming from. And then you have Mars, which is just like the sun, you know, it's, it's our will, it's our ego, it's our drive, you know, to, you know, it's, it's our life path, our journey. So that side of us is really pulling the Gemini moon, which is a little bit like, oh, you know, do, you know, can I just collect it from other sources? Do I really need to do, experience this myself? And it's like, well, you know, you're going to get a lot deeper of an experience. And then you have Mars pulling on that side too. Mars and Sag, like I said last week, motivated by the things we believe in, which can get out of control at times, but really, you know, because we get a lot of ego and pride involved in that, you know, so it's like that double pull on that Gemini moon saying like, do this, do this, do this. Now, the mutable T-square is really interesting in this one, right? Because it's to Saturn in Pisces. And Pisces is a sign that in many ways is similar to the Sag because they're both ruled by Jupiter and they both want to take more in. You know, it's just kind of like a different way of doing it. So there is that, that this kind of energy going on here. But at the same time, Saturn is someone who's gonna, what, restrict. It's the energy that's gonna restrict some of this energy. So we're coming off this mutable T-square, going into this full moon. And you know what your experiences were yesterday, in particular, Sunday, but like that's when the mutable T-square really locked in. And that energy of that mutable T-square is, I do want to go somewhere, but I'm feeling very blocked right now. I'm feeling restricted somehow from being able to do that. And that has a two-edged effect, actually, at least. Actually, even three-edged effect. But number one, it can be depressing to us in on, on a certain way on the inside, on the emotional side, that we're being held back somehow from being able to do what we really want to do. And it also can get us very upset with whoever we are perceiving as the source of being that restriction, okay? And then that affects our relationships. Moon square Saturn can really affect our relationships. It's the energy of separation, actually. It's the energy where we really have to accept the reality of what we're seeing. Both the sun and moon are square Saturn and Mars too. We're being slowed down somehow by the reality of our circumstances and situations. And it's really upsetting to the Sagittarius sun and Mars that this is happening, you know, so... Many times that is actually a person that's doing that, that's close to us. The moon energy is showing that, that it can be someone in our family, someone who we're emotionally tied to, or it can also be an authority. There can be some kind of someone who's an authority who's restricting us from being able to take that Sagittarian path. But either way, there's a lot of anger, a lot of resentment about that right that's building up and it really is this energy of separation that's going to occur it's like the energy of this is the reality of the situation and it's not going to get any better and it's kind of depressing to me and and it's blocking me actively and i need to just get away from the people or situation that that's doing this to me now the moon mars energy kicks in too. That opposition shows that whoever or whatever, and it's most likely a whoever here, okay, because it is an opposition energy in the T-square. Whoever we're perceiving that as, we're going to get really aggravated. Aggravation is the right word for this energy. Very aggravated with that situation in person ready to strike out at them 
and ready to move on without them if that's what's necessary. So that's what the energy building into this full moon was. And now we're there, you know, seeing all this stuff. And the Sag part is really like ready to take off, especially with the Mars inflating it up. And it's a mutable T-square. So it is like, yeah, we have to make adjustments. That's what the situation requires. It requires adjustment right now. It requires change right now. It requires the situation to move forward now, you know? And there's a lot of duality you know, in this whole situation with Saturn in Pisces and the moon in Gemini, there's a lot of confusing energy too because the ruler of the moon in Gemini is Mercury. And Mercury right now is in an exact square to Neptune. So that means the aftermath of this full moon and the intense energy that's involved is likely going to be very confusing and not clear what to do about it. And so what's interesting is like, you know, the moon Mars once again really shows it's people who are close to us more likely that we're really seeing the reality of the situation with, you know, people in our family, people that, you know, that we work closely with, people that are, you know, close friends, people like that. They're the ones who are, you know, really going to be where we see the situation is stuck from them and we really have to make an adjustment. Now, it's interesting, too, the open end of this T-square is Virgo which is being like, you know, really grounded and self-critical about the situation that you're in, the reality of the situation that you're in, and using that in a constructive way, if you can somehow, looking at everything in the whole thing, in the whole situation with a fine tooth comb and going through it and being, you know, critical about, you know, the judgments that you've made, but trying to, like, be constructive about that, too, to learn something about that. And the mutability helps us to move on from it, okay? But once again, you know, the Mercury square Neptune, now, the that's exact today, too, on Monday. That's the ruler of this full moon. We need to slow down and... You know, not what it, what it's going to do is like really, I think, kind of put us into a situation where we realize what we ideally wanted to do is not really happening at all. And that we, you know, what we have a tendency then to do is shut down, is to get quiet, secretive, maybe even deceptive, hold back information, hold back how we really feel, hold back what we're really thinking. So there's a lot of confusion, and that only adds to the confusion. And if you're purposely misleading and doing that, that's just going to add to it too. But we, it is not a time to make agreements with others because there's just not, you know, any clear understandings going on. And we have to just kind of let it go. You know, we have to, you know, really let it go. So what you need to do personally is look at where <clears throat> five degrees Gemini and Sagittarius are in your chart. And that's the two houses, the area of lives that, you know, where this energy is really going to affect you personally. Now, there's a few other things I want to get into. And as usual, I spent a lot of time on that, but that was the main thing this week. On Wednesday and Thursday, there's two really interesting quincunxes operating together. The Sun quincunx Jupiter at the same time that Venus is quincunx Neptune. And we have to be a little bit careful with these two. They're softer ones. They're actually almost holiday season. I, I was going to say, you know, putting those energies together, it's almost like a holiday season vibe, those two energies together. And so, like, you know, it's really, you know... 
wanting to spread, you know, idealism and our values through what we're doing and wanting to take more in. But, you know, the thing is about this, it can have us adopt kind of a privileged, idealistic attitude about ourselves and relationships. And we can really mislead ourselves. It can get us into an energy of like, like, I deserve this kind of energy and like, you know, and kind of almost get a passive, lazy, that kind of thing over either idealizing certain situations and people feeling like we deserve it. Well, maybe so and maybe not. You know, it's like we will find out. But it does, the Sun-Jupiter one can, does give us a lot of compassion and tolerance. And, you know, and if we have a little discipline and can maintain, you know, some focus on reality, we can be very successful with this energy and, and really bring in more. Spread holiday cheer. It's a very optimistic energy, you know, so it's like, that's what I mean. It's the two of them together, but very, op but they, you know, just have a tendency to be passive and sloppy and lazy at times, you know, in this kind of like privileged way. So like, you know, if we, you know, do maintain some discipline and some hold to reality and spread good cheer, which is what they're about, then we can have like impeccable timing in, in certain situations and helping ourselves out and helping other people out. It almost looks like we have good luck, but we're kind of almost creating it with a good dose of optimism and idealism but staying somewhat grounded to reality so that we're constantly adapting to the situations on the fly well. And, and so the other thing too is to, it puts us in a charitable zone and we may like go and help people who need help, but just make sure we're not doing that out of a, once again, something that like out of a sense of duty or self-sacrifice. It has to be very real, that situation, or, he's, or the energy is going to get wonky on us. Okay, the other big thing going on this week is Mercury is going into Capricorn, and it will immediately sextile Saturn, because Saturn, once again, is at that first degree of Pisces. So Mercury is going to go into Capricorn on Friday. Right, and then it's gonna go up to about eight or nine degrees Capricorn, and on December 13th, it's gonna go retrograde in Capricorn. Remember, all our retrograde Mercury's this year are in Earth signs. Now, this one happens to go back into Sagittarius for a while, too. It will actually, on Christmas Eve, December 24th, go back into Sag, and then when Mercury will go direct again on January 2nd of 2024 and eventually um and that will be at 23 degrees sag and eventually it will turn around and uh, on the second it'll turn around and return to capricorn on january 15th through february 5th so what we've got is two three week periods of of Capricorn. Mercury's going to double dip in Capricorn. Usually, you know, Mercury goes through a sign in about three weeks. So we're going to get, get it to double dip in Capricorn, it's double dipping in Sag, too, in this particular retrograde period. But Mercury in Cap for the next three weeks. This is the serious thinker. This is the serious decision maker. This is someone who will get all the facts and be very practical about making a decision or making a move, which is really excellent. It's a really good time for organizing things, planning things, especially on the business end, business communications, business information, you know, learning that a very serious attitude, you know, really wanting to take in practical things. So this is really an excellent period to work on business things, to make decisions like that, you know, um, you know, and just, you know, and, and we, you know, even though Mercury is in cap, it also does see, you know, the shadow side of life and can laugh at, you know, that and, you know, keep a like kind of humorous or cynical kind of attitude that's mixed with humor about reality. So that, you know, that's where it's really at. It's not going to jump to conclusions. It's really good. That kind of thing. And it's immediately sextile Saturn. Um, so next weekend is a great weekend to like take opportunities to 
plan, organize business decisions, um, serious, thorough work with your mind, um, you know, mental, intellectual work. It gives a great, great focus. You know, you can correct a lot of um, mistakes and clean up situations, get them better. You know, it's a, it's a good way to say that. It gives us a really serious, focused mind, a practical mind. It's good for communicating about serious things on a business type level, detached, doesn't allow the emotions to get involved. And Sunday, there's two other aspects I want to mention before I go. Um, Sunday, actually, and Venus is square Pluto Sunday. So Venus square Pluto, to me, may be like almost the after effects of this full moon, like after we get through the Mercury-Neptune confusion and see where it all lands, a lot, you know, a week later here, you know, next weekend. Venus square Pluto shows that like really emotional stuff has come up in relationships, emotional experiences that were very intense, possibly be dramatic and have irrevocably changed the reality of, of relationships. And so, you know, the question under Venus square Pluto is like, where does it go from here? Is it because the change is now real? So can we rebuild from that, you know, be the phoenix that rises from whatever that debris is, or is it time to actually completely move on and forward because, you know, that the ability to change together is not really happening. So there can be a lot of drama in relationships. There can be a lot of games being played between people trying to control one another, power struggles, possession. Things like that, you know, and this is where we really have to accept that re relationships have changed, a new reality is within them, and do we want to rebuild from there or not? Do we want to move forward, you know? And so, and also this is like, you know, also just kind of being careful with our finances and money, especially during this, you know, holiday season, you know, being like, you know, focused on, you know, what we're doing with that and not getting too wild. And it also can give intense emotional energy behind our creativity. So if we are in an artistic zone, we can really get some very passionate energy into our art output and, and actually get a lot of output done too. And the one other aspect on Sunday, there's a Mars Queen Kong's Jupiter. So the third Queen Kong's and Queen Kong's this can always be funny. You know, they're always and a little bit awkward. There's nothing in common with the two signs. That's why. So like, you know, their energy is like very like, you know, banging heads at times. And Mars and Jupiter together give a lot of energy. You know, they give a lot of physical energy. They give a lot of drive. They give a lot of an optimistic, exuberant attitude about what we want to do. You know, what we're active about. Um, the problem with the Queen comes is we can take it way too far. You know, and really mess ourselves up, like, you know, may stain our, you know, reputation by not being able to come through, um, you know, actually hurt ourselves physically from trying to go beyond our physical limitations, um, hurt our resources from, you know, stretching them beyond what we need. We, you know, are a safe zone. So that's the kind of energy of this. So it's, it requires discipline once again. It really requires some, that uh, that Capricorn, Mercury, Capricorn, and that Mercury sextile Saturn energy to discipline this. And if you can discipline it and allow the energy to go out in like, you know, these bursts, then you can actually control it well and get a lot done. You know, but it doesn't work well in a really long term kind of like staying on something. It's like get something done, boom, get something done, boom. So, yeah, that's what we have to be careful of because we, you know, we can actually end up, you know, getting hurting ourselves and hurting the way that others look at us afterwards when we can't live up to our reputation. So, or what we promise to do. All right. Um, well, that's what I got for this week. It's a little bit of a tricky week for sure. It's a funny full moon. You know, it really looks like, you know, it, it, it has to do with the aftermath of some intense situations that occurred, you know, on the weekend and then just bringing that up and like bringing a lot of confusion afterwards, you know, but that Mercury and Capricorn energy is an excellent time 
to really focus the mind on your goals. It's great for business stuff. Really recommend that the next three weeks and on the weekend in particular when it's sextiling that Saturn. It's an excellent time to do that. Okay, um, next week, I will not only do the weekly, but I'll do the monthly for December. And I know, you know, we're going to have the Mercury retrogrades. So I'll talk about that some more and some other stuff. So um, look forward to that next week. So once again, um, this is Matt Laud, and this is the Astrological Wings channel. It is a video blog that I do on YouTube. If you have a YouTube account, please become a follower. Um, it's also available on all kinds of podcasts. Um, no necessarily needing anybody to actually see the video. It's really, you want to listen to the words, right? So it frees you up to actually do that when you're doing other things, when you have a podcast. Also, I post the link on Instagram, become a follower on that, please. Um, Astrological Winds channel, just look it up. Or you can privately Facebook me, um, Matthew Lawton, ask for a friend, and I do put that Every week I put the link up on the newsreel so you'll get it that way too. Um, the best way you guys can support me is, number one, remember to pass the link on. And if you'd like to give any kind of, you know, um, currency donation to the blog, any amount is appreciated. Literally, there's no amount too small. Uh, my Venmo handle is at Matthew with two T's again and then hyphen Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. Literally, no amount is too small. And the best way you guys can support me professionally is I am a professional astrologer. I've been one for over 20 years. I've done readings for over 20 years. I was trained professionally for seven years. I dabbled in astrology personally for 10 years before that. It's my life. And I know it well. I have a lot of very satisfied clients. I'd like you to be one to or someone that you know. It's not the same as getting a computer reading. It's not the same as reading a book about astrology and trying to figure it out for yourself. It's not the same as having a friend who knows a little about astrology give you a reading, a professional reading. You will learn a lot about yourself and always have that to always remember and get a lot more self-fulfillment out of your own life, self-determination, self-empowerment. So that's what I promise you a natal reading would do. And every year around your birthday, get a predictive reading so that you know what's going on in your life for the next year. Just like this little blog I do every week, it's a blog basically for you for the whole year. And so you get to know the energies you're working with. And if it's frustrating, you'll know how to work better with them and when they'll be ending, things like that. Relationship charts, children's charts, um, elections for when you're looking for the best timing of a event, horary questions if you have something that you can't get a decision of, fixed star readings for deeper soul purpose. If you really know your natal chart well, any kind of specific question. All that stuff can be done astrologically. I also have beginner's classes for people who want that. And if you have a group that needs a class, lecture, workshop, question and answer session, mini readings at your event, all those things, open up a dialogue with me by just emailing M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com. No, you know, no commitment to open up the dialogue. That's M A T T H U E eight two three at gmail dot com. Okay, I will see you all next week. We'll talk about December then, and um, you know, try to work with that Mercury and Capricorn this week, next two weeks on your business stuff, on what you're planning to do. The energy is in your favor. See you next week.